name is Dave Johansson, and this is Blossom Hill Crafts Pottery Studio. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about oxidation. In fact, it's going to be March Oxidation Madness. So what is oxidation? Well, there are two terms you hear in ceramics a lot. One is oxidation, and the other is reduction. And they are about firing. So um, we fire with a fuel. Our fuel is propane. And whenever you have a fire, you need two things, right? You need fuel and you need um, oxygen. Reduction um, refers to reducing the amount of oxy oxygen. So think of it like this. You're at a campfire and um, you've got sort of uh, this campfire that's just sort of barely burning and it's got like dirty orange flames and you can smell that campfire smell and there's a little smoke, a little black smoke coming up off of the top of it. That's a reduction firing. There's more fuel there than there is oxygen and it's burning very dirty. That's reduction. Now if I get down to the campfire and I blow into the coals, right, I'm adding oxygen to the fire and now the fire starts to get bigger the flame maybe gets a little bit of blue or yellow color in it. The smoke and soot goes away. That is moving towards an oxidation flame. So if I use the term reduction, it means that I have reduced the amount of oxygen and therefore there is more carbon in the firing. If I use the term oxidation, what that means is that the flame that's burning is highly oxidized. All right. Our normal weekly firings are moderately to heavily reduced. Um, for the month of March, uh, we're going to do one firing right at the end of the month. In fact, we're going to actually do it in the first week of April there. Um, that is oxidized. We're going to get as much reduction out of the kiln as we can and have an oxidized firing. Now, why would we do that? Well, some of you have been using like T2 and dark brown clay. And you get frustrated because every now and then it seems that your, your pots come out very, very brittle. That's something that's called iron corn. What happens is in your clay, there is red iron, okay? And the, I, the environment inside of the kiln is heavily reduced, which means it's starving for oxygen. So what happens is uh, the flame inside of the kiln goes around looking for oxygen molecules and um, it's able to rob an oxygen molecule from the iron. So red iron has two oxygen molecules. The flame robs an oxygen molecule, and now that red iron becomes black iron, and black iron with one oxygen molecule, and the black iron is very, very brittle. So one uh, reason to do an oxidation firing is you'll have less iron corn. So if you're working with uh, teeth, T2 or cinnamon or the dark brown clay, you might want to consider putting them in an oxidation firing. It is going to affect the color of your clay. It might not quite be as deep and as beautiful, uh, but the clay body will be stronger. So give it a try. See if you like it. It also affects the glazes. So this is a copper red glaze, and you probably have glazed with the copper red. Remember that it does run. This person is very good at glazing. They were able to get it red all the way to the bottom. Be careful. Usually you don't glaze a copper red all the way to the foot like that. But this is a beautifully glazed copper red. This is Pinnell's red. And this is what it looks like in an oxidation fire. I mean, in a reduction fire. Sorry. This is what it looks like in a reduction fire. So think about copper. If you look at copper, like uh, copper downspouts or a copper penny, right? When you get a copper penny, it's kind of, it's, when it's new, it's kind of got a little bit of a sheen to it, a little bit of a red color to it. But when it oxidizes over time, it maybe looks green. So this is the same, well, this is a copper red glaze. This is actually flambe, but the, cop, the panels look similar. This is flambe fired in oxidation. So it, the, the copper oxidized and turned green. And if you look on the bottom of this bowl, um, what you're seeing is a clear glaze. Clear gets very, very clear in oxidation. So um, copper red in reduction turns red. 
Flambe in reduction turns reds and blues, but in oxidation, it turns green. The clear stays very, very clear. So another reason that you might want to do an oxidation firing um, is if you like to use underglazes um, or you're painting with slips and you really want those colors to come out crisp and clear and you don't want sort of that milkiness in it, uh, the oxidation firing will help with that. So just remember with your clear glaze, you still want to get it really thin. Uh, when, we, even when you fire in oxidation, the clear cone pen glaze needs to be very, very thin. Try it in oxidation. So try T2, try uh, cinnamon, try dark brown, just to see what those clay bodies look like. Try the copper red in the flambe. Um, try some of the translucent glazes like Chun or Celadon and see how they come out. You're gonna see very little effect on the Timaku or the Navy or the opaque glazes. You're not gonna see a lot of change. They'll, they won't quite be as rich in color if you do them in oxidation. Um, and um, yeah, I just give you, uh, I really encourage you to try it. Um, and we'll be firing the oxidation firing the first week there in April. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Dave Johansson. Uh, this is Blossom Home Crafts.